A large format camera is essentially great granddad's camera. The one with accordion style bellows, the big film, and the curtain draped around the viewfinder. 19th century technology with some modern refinements. For many serious photographers, the basic concept still clicks. In an age when cameras are miniaturized and digitized, the large format camera might seem to be a relic, but for pros, it's a creative tool. The flexible bellows allow for a wide range of movements for incredible control of the image. Image quality is another attraction. This camera uses big sheet film, four by five inches and up, generating big negatives that don't need to be enlarged as much during printing, so the image has better resolution. At this factory, they mold many of the camera's parts out of plastic. They inject liquid plastic into molds and the parts quickly solidify. Other parts are made of laser-cut aluminum and stainless steel. The camera maker assembles the base first, attaching rails that slide back and forth for focusing. The next parts allow for swing and shift action, movements that come in handy when composing a shot. He attaches the camera's molded plastic body to the swing and shift assembly. Next, he assembles the front part of the camera, which holds the lens and shutter. It has a swing and tilt mechanism for changing a shot's depth of field. He slides the lens holder into place and secures it. It can be raised and lowered when composing the shot. He inserts spirit levels into slots in the front and rear sections of the camera. These levels will be used to check the angle of the shot. Moving now to the focusing screen. It's made of ground acrylic to diffuse light. He protects the acrylic from scratches with a glass plate and secures the assembly with stainless steel clips. He snaps the completed focusing screen to the body of the camera where it can be easily switched from portrait to landscape position. He tests the focus mechanism and confirms it's operational. He folds and glues fabric in an accordion configuration to create expanding bellows that will link the front and rear parts of the camera. He applies double-sided tape around the inner lip of the folded bellows. He sticks more double-sided tape onto a plastic frame and peels away the tape backing in strategic locations. He inserts the frame into the bellows and aligns it with the taped inner border. He then completely peels off the tape backing and presses the frame to the bellows taped rim. This frame adds crucial rigidity to the bellows. Using more double-sided tape and adhesive, he secures the bellows accordion to a larger fabric bag. Next, he glues plastic flanges to each end of the bellows. The flanges are connector pieces for attaching the bellows to the front and rear sections of the camera. There are two kinds of bellows. The one with the bag attached is usually used with a lens of short focal length. An accordion without the bag has a much longer range of extension to accommodate a bigger lens. He now connects the back of the camera to the front with the bellows. They are a flexible link between the two. By expanding or retracting the bellows, the photographer can adjust the distance between the lens and film to focus the shot. Finally, he attaches the lens to the front of the camera. It's now ready for a film test. He loads the film into the holder. Normally, this is done in complete darkness to prevent exposure of the film, but he's left the lights on for our camera. The film slides into the holder into the camera back. And while film still rules in large format photography, there are now digital camera backs for photographers who want instant results with the traditional focus movements of the bellows camera. It's all a matter of focus.